What could be sounds at your boy kicking raid? And today, without being too weird, we're gonna go through how to epilate properly as a man dealing with this. I had quite a few requests for this one. Uh, some of them were perfectly normal, some of them were pretty freaky. But it's a video that I wish existed when I started this sort of figuring this whole thing out three years ago. So I'm gonna make it and I'm gonna try and keep it as not weird as possible. So, minimum requirements for this are an epilator, a moisturizer, one that doesn't hurt you, and an exfoliating thingy. So I've got this exfoliating glove, you could also get like a charcoal mitt, you could get an exfoliating thingy, whatever you want. Maximum requirements, if you're starting from this, like long hair, you're gonna want some clippers, you're gonna want a tarp of some sort to stand on to help to minimize your mess, you're gonna want an exfoliating face wash. I have this one and it has charcoal in it. You want a face wash rather than a body wash because they are usually gentler and you want to be pretty gentle. Paracetamol, if you haven't done this before or you haven't done it in a while, you know, you can take paracetamol half an hour before and that will help you. Antihistamine, if you come out in bumps, that can be a histamine response and an antihistamine will help that not happen. And lastly, some tweezers for whatever little ones get missed or for if you are dealing with ingrown hairs. Ingrown hairs can be a problem from this. I've experienced it quite a bit in the past, to be honest. I've got some scars left over from that. There are ways that you can reduce the chance that you're gonna get ingrown hairs, but it's not guaranteed. You know, you're sort of taking a risk with this. But what I figured out has kept that as low as possible. So first thing, if you haven't done this before, or you haven't done this in a while, it's probably gonna hurt. Have a few paracetamol, why not? Second thing, if you are going from longer hair, then you are gonna need to shorten your hair. To do that, you're gonna need clippers. Corded or cordless is fine as long as they are clean, as long as they are sharp. Both when you are epilating and when you're clipping, you wanna go in the opposite direction of the hair. So, generally, your hair is gonna grow in and down at the top of your chest, up and in underneath your pecs, and then in and down the rest of your torso. So start from the middle and work it out. Clip your hair back to between one and five mil. You want it to be long enough that the epilator can pick it up, but not long enough that it just breaks. So now you should look something like this. You do want to be thorough with the clipping stage because the more effort you put in then, the less effort it's going to take on the thing that actually hurts. And if you don't do it, you're going to have hairs that just break. You're going to have the epilator going through, in, in my case, just like a briar patch of hair. And it's just going to grab a fistful. It's going to pull it. And most of that probably won't come out because it'll break because it's too long. So you should look like this. Next stage is to have a shower as hot as balls and get your exfoliating mitt, no product, and you just wanna get rid of as much dead skin in this area as possible. What we're doing here is the heat is gonna open up the pores and then exfoliating that dead skin is gonna help you not get ingrown hairs in the future because when we remove the hair, you just can have an open hair follicle. Any shit that gets in there, like oil, grease, dead skin, is gonna make it more likely that that hair isn't gonna be able to find its way back out. And that's not good. I'll also mention that if while you were doing that, you trimmed another area of your, area of your body that you don't intend on epilating, exfoliate that area as well, because one of the reasons that it's so itchy once you've shortened hair is that the clipper cuts it like straight. So now you've got like a spiky hair that gets caught in your clothing or whatever uh, and wheels around. Whereas if you get it very, very hot and exfoliate, you kind of round the end of that hair and it's going to end up a lot more like it was before, just shorter. So you won't be getting entangled in your clothes and you also won't be stabbing your own skin with the sharp end. So bonus tip. For some reason, I thought that wearing suit trousers while you watch me shower might make it less weird, but I'm not sure it did. So by now, you should have removed any little hairs that were still stuck to you. You should have exfoliated a bunch of dead skin off you, and you should be warm, and you want to stay warm. So put the heating on, or you know, go back in time half an hour and put the heating on, because you want those pores to stay open. If it gets cold, then the pores close, and it gets harder to remove all the hair. So working in the same direction that you did before with your clippers, you're just gonna take your epilator, 
bite down on some willow bark or something. And uh, yeah, you just... <laughs> You're probably going to want a couple of passes to get it all. Pull your skin taut while you're doing it so that it requires the minimum amount of pull to get the hair out. So you're not like pulling and then the skin's giving way with it. You're just pulling the hair out because there's no give in the skin. The reason I said don't use a product before is because any product is going to make your hair slippery, greasy. And this is basically a whole bunch of tweezers stuck together. And it's easier to grip just a dry ass hair than it is a moisturized, greasy hair. Oh, and I also recommend full blast. Like they usually have two speeds. And the manual usually says, if you're new, start on one. Don't start on one. You can either pluck fast or pluck slow. And either way, it's gonna hurt, so you might as well pluck fast, right? It just takes less time. The first pass is absolutely the worst, and it'll get better just because it's picking up less hair every time you go over it. If you would prefer to take longer, but be in less pain, you could, instead of using the whole area, just use a small part of the area. And some of these actually come with a little clip-on thing where you could reduce the surface area of the actual working bit. But to be honest, I reckon just suck it up, get it done, long strokes, and that's easier said than done. And I wish I'd have taken two paracetamol earlier instead of one. I only did one because I was like, well, I guess I need a bit of B-roll, I'll take a paracetamol. But now, I wish I'd have taken two. And there's nothing wrong with that, because this sucks. But if you keep it up, if you do this every you know, week or every couple of days even. It is much more pleasant because every time the hair comes through, it does come through weaker. And if you pick it up when it's younger, it's more like a silky little spider web instead of, you know, a pube. <laughs> If you've reached this point with me, congratulations. The worst is honestly over. The worst parts are usually where you hold the most fat. In the topography of your chest, like this dip, that I also find quite painful. Best thing to do is, like I said, stretch the skin, but also pull it over to one side so that you're not actually trying to grab them out of the valley. Because in that case, you know, the skin's got to give all the way back out. So pull the skin over to one side, epilate up that area and then pull it over to the other and then epilate up that area. Don't try and dig around in there. I have a couple of birthmarks and I've never had a problem just running over them, but I do suggest treating them the way that you will treat your nipples, which I'll tell you right now. I think it's best just to plop your finger on your nipple and then go right up to it. Go again from the other side and keep going for all right. Probably gonna want a mirror for this stage, especially if you have a beard, because when you're going like this, and then you epilate it up, it's not so great. <laughs> it gives me a headache to like, and then cross-eyed to try and reach it. You will find that once you have been in the direction of most of the hairs, there'll be some that just won't come and they're probably just growing backwards. You go the opposite direction and it'll catch those as well. And we're done, we've got the whole area. So next thing, you have two choices. You can either jump back in the shower and have a cold shower, which is gonna close up all the pores, or you can just moisturize. Either way, you want to moisturize. Ideally, your moisturizer is gonna be alcohol-free and fragrance-free, so that when you put it on you, it doesn't sting. You don't want anything that stings. I actually use Palmer's Cocoa Butter. I use this on my head, and it actually does have alcohol, and it does have a fragrance, but it doesn't seem to bother me in the slightest, and it smells like a chocolate bar. <laughs> I wish I could say just go about your life, congratulations, it's over, but it isn't. You have to upkeep, so you're gonna wanna do this probably twice a week, to be honest, because the more you do it, the less it hurts. And it's not that you acclimatize to the pain or whatever, it's just that you're literally pulling out less hairs and that hair is weaker. If you, for example, shave it and then epilate it again, rather than removing the hair, you've cut the hair so the root is now stronger. So you do just sort of wanna keep up epilation for as long as you wanna be hairless. 
Next time you have a shower, you're gonna use that exfoliating mitt. Basically, that's gotta be part of your routine now. Anywhere that you've epilated, you need to exfoliate because you don't want that buildup of gunk or dead skin to get in where the hair is supposed to be coming out and then the hair can't find its way out. I use this charcoal exfoliating face wash. Face washes are generally a bit more gentle than a body wash and I would rather a gentle thing and do it more frequently than an aggressive thing because this area is gonna be sensitive. If you've never done this before and you had a lot of hair, it's gonna feel weird when you put a shirt on. It's like skin that's never really been touched. It's proper weird. And now that we've done it, <laughs> let's discuss if you should do it because ingrown hairs are a possibility with this and they are more probable in men than women, but you can also have the same problems with shaving, waxing. If you are prone to ingrown hairs, and some people are more prone, it can leave scars, it can leave like hyperpigmentation depending on your skin. The best option for you is laser. And if you know that you wanna be hairless and you've got the money, just do laser, for God's sakes, do laser. Because it actually kills the follicle. You aren't gonna get ingrown hairs because your hair doesn't grow. How long this is gonna last is gonna depend entirely upon you. I did a video a while back comparing the length that this lasts and waxing lasts and shaving lasts, so check that out if you're interested. Epilators, they all work exactly the same way. They are all just rolling tweezers. So to be honest, it doesn't matter which one you get. Mine is from Lidl and I think it was 16 pounds. I've had it for two or three years. The battery is big enough that even doing my whole torso, it doesn't get to the point where it's like, I'm running out of battery. It's fine. You could spend a whole ton of money. The recommended one, the one that everyone thinks is the best, is the Braun Silk Apple 9. People like it because you can use it in the shower. In the shower is fine. They say it hurts less. Yes, it will, but that's also just because it's doing a worse job. It's harder to pick up a wet hair than a dry hair. So if it hurts less, it's just because you're gonna have to go over twice as many times to actually pick up the hair. And that's fine, just giving you the information. So all the stuff that I've used, I'll link down below. I'll link the fancy one. I'll link an equivalent to the one that I got from Lidl because you know, they're all the same, basically. If you do end up with an ingrown hair, you ideally want it to be one that comes out and goes back in, and that's as simple as getting a pair of tweezers, getting underneath and just like pulling it out. Sometimes they can just grow sideways and you are either gonna have to go digging for it or get someone you love <laughs> that's got a bit of a grudge with you to go digging for the hair and there's nothing else you can do about it, so. Ideally, don't get them, and that works by exfoliating before and after, and just keep being careful. If you have body acne, then don't epilate that area. Epilation is not for you, it, it's just not, and I'm sorry about that, it's just, you know, life sucks. I think I'm done. I think we got through this, I don't think it was that weird. I think we managed. <laughs> the suit trousers thing was a bit strange, but I didn't know how else to move forward, so. As always, we do what we must. What you must is leave a like and subscribe. <laughs> did you like that? I did a YouTuber thing. Whatever you do, get them gains. Be well.